Hello and welcome, my name is Alina and in this video I will be going through the tutorial Sentinel-2 for quantitative crop monitoring. This tutorial uses the software SNAP from ESA. Instructions on how to download and set up SNAP can be found online. If you've not yet installed SNAP, I would recommend pausing this video and installing it now. Using SNAP, you will learn how to derive various biophysical parameters for a potato field. You will interpret the effect of different growing conditions on the biophysical parameters, and you'll be able to compare the parameters throughout the growing season. In Part A, we will familiarize ourselves with the study area and calculate different biophysical parameters for a single date. In Part B, we'll compare the biophysical parameters for the entire growing season. Let's start! First, we'll check that all the files have been downloaded successfully. Navigate to the folder where you unzip the S2A born subset and make sure you have the .data and .dim files for the date range 2016-0508-2016-1005. This corresponds to the 8th of May to the 5th of October. In total, you should have about 9 uh, images. Next, we'll go to Snap and open up a file. I'll be using the 20th of July as our date for Part A, though feel free to choose any other date. Note that the earlier and later dates uh, might not have a lot of vegetation. By clicking on the metadata, you can open up a window to view the properties of the Sentinel image we are using. In the Bands subfolder, you will see four bands. These correspond to Sentinel-2 Blue, Green, Red, and Near Infrared. Explore them individually by double-clicking each band. You can zoom in to explore the pixels of each band by clicking on the Pixel Info tab. The values for all four layers will appear in the side window. You can see our study area in the center, as well as the farmhouse, a lake, forests, and other fields. You can open up an RGB view by right-clicking the file and selecting Open RGB Image Window with Natural Colors or False Color Infrared. Opening up the spectrum view allows us to see the spectral signatures of the pixels. Zooming into our study site now, can you spot the different growing conditions in the field? What could explain these differences? Is it still possible to see the differences with the natural color image? Having explored the images, let's calculate some biophysical parameters. We will start off with the Weighted Difference Vegetation Index, WDVI for short. Right-click on the S2A Born file and go to Band Maths. Here, we will input our equation for WDVI. First, set a name for the band. Make sure the virtual band is checked off, and then add your equation. For WDVI, we need the slope of the soil line, C. This has been calculated on bare soil in an image from May as being around 1.35. You can check this yourself as well. Click Run and a new band will be created. First, save the entire file. Then you can delete bands 1 to 4 and save the file as file name plus WDVI. When we zoom in on our study area, we can see the WDVI values. Compare these values and explain what the difference is caused by. Now, we'll repeat this process with the rest of the biophysical parameters. For the leaf area index, 
LAI, we will use the previously derived WDVI and use the transformation equation. Perform the same steps as before to calculate and save the new band. We will now place pins so that we're able to more easily find the points of interest. Now, take a look at the LAI values. Compare them and see if you can make some conclusions. Next, to calculate the chlorophyll vegetation index, CVI, we'll use the original image and input the following equation into band mass. We will then save this band and perform the same steps to save the band to new file as we previously did with WDVI and LAI. We will calculate the leaf chlorophyll content using the CVI image. In band maths, we will use the following equation. Finally, we will combine our knowledge from the previous parameters to generate the canopy chlorophyll content. We'll calculate it from the original image with the following equation. We can now zoom in on the light and dark pixels to compare the values from the different parameters.
This is it for part A. In the next section, we'll be calculating the parameters for all of the image dates.